if you have been using kubernetes you know how difficult it is to learn kubernetes first and then the hard part is deploying docker containers inside kubernetes it is comparatively challenging because the learning curve is huge when you want to deploy an application in a kubernetes cluster red hat has solved this problem by creating a platform as a service over the kubernetes deployment in this video we are going to see what is OpenShift and how easy is it to deploy a container inside OpenShift. We will also be looking at how to learn OpenShift for free and what does Red Hat provide for us to learn OpenShift. Let's get started. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primus. If you're familiar with the cloud computing models, this is how it looks like. We start off with infrastructure as a service, which is your typical virtual machines where you can deploy your applications. The corresponding stacks are AWS EC2, Google Cloud Engine, and Azure has something called Azure VMs. These correspond to something called infrastructure as a service. And Kubernetes falls under the container as a service you will be deploying Docker containers inside the Kubernetes environment. And the corresponding platform which is available for these container as a service are GKE, which is the Google Kubernetes engine, Elastic Container Service, which is Amazon specific, and then Azure Container Service. If let's say you don't want to worry about managing your containers and you're worried only about managing your application, that's when you move to the platform as a service. Platform as a service includes OpenShift, which is what we are going to see today. Correspondingly, we have seen Cloud Foundry in the earlier videos and the enterprise products which are related are Heroku, Pivotal Cloud Foundry and OpenShift. If you move above, we will have the function as a service. There are a lot of different function as a service or serverless frameworks like Lambdas, Google Cloud Functions and Azure Functions. If you still move further ahead, you have software as a service where you can find products created by software companies. And these are softwares which you can leverage as a service. This is the general cloud computing model and Kubernetes falls under container as a service. Moving towards the right, we are moving Kubernetes inside platform as a service and that's what OpenShift provides. So what is OpenShift? OpenShift, as I mentioned, is a Kubernetes platform for deploying your applications. You don't have to learn Kubernetes completely and you don't have to bother about knowing the nuances of the Kubernetes environment because Red Hat solves those problems by abstracting out the complete container orchestration beneath the platform. You can still deploy Docker containers inside OpenShift, but you don't have to handcraft each and everything inside the Kubernetes cluster. Imagine OpenShift as a fully managed platform as a service where you will be deploying containers. To get started, I have just created a free trial account. You can go to openshift.com and then click on the free trial. The moment you click on free trial, OpenShift gives you different options for you to choose from. I use the experimental option where you can sign up with a sandbox environment. I'm going to log into the cluster because I already have created my login account inside OpenShift. Let me log in with that particular account. The moment I log in, I can see that there is a subscription option. So by default, my sandbox is available for I think two months. I created it two days ago and it shows me that I have two GB worth of memory and then space which I can use in this particular subscription. I'm clicking on the open web console. This will take me to the console which OpenShift exposes to us. If you use any cloud provider, you would have seen the console option irrespective of whether it is AWS or Google Cloud or Cloud Foundry, you can see that everybody has a console. And I'm going to use the OpenShift console from Red Hat. The first thing you should do after you log in to the console or your OpenShift environment is create a project. I have created a project called Tech Primers. You can create n number of projects and then you can group your deployments inside these projects. In essence, these are related to namespaces inside Kubernetes. So you create a project 
For example, I have the project called Tech Primers. This will translate to the namespace Tech Primers inside the Kubernetes cluster. In order to learn Kubernetes, we saw that there is something called Katakoda. OpenShift leverages the same Katakoda to provide interactive learning portal. This is one of the most intensive learning portal which I have seen from a cloud provider. You can navigate through the portal using learn.openshift.com and you can see that different variety of courses are there. This looks small. The moment you click on, let's say, building applications on OpenShift, you can see that you have wide variety of examples which you can navigate from. For example, most of us are familiar with Spring and Spring Boot related projects. You can directly go to this particular project and you can see the depth of examples which you have inside the OpenShift learning portal. This is one of the most interactive learning portals you will ever use for learning OpenShift with Kubernetes. So at the moment I click on getting started with Spring, it will take me to the Katakoda website. You could see that the Katakoda VMs have been launched and you can see that this is powered by Katakoda. If you don't know what is Katakoda, Katakoda is basically an interactive tutorial where you will be given examples of how you can achieve some scenarios or tasks. See that you have the terminal here. You have OpenShift already installed in this terminal and it is ready to serve you. This is one easier way of learning OpenShift with Kubernetes. Meanwhile, what we can do is we can go back to our OpenShift online console and we can try deploying an application which is already present. So the moment I click on tech primers, I can see that there is metrics information on how much CPU I'm using, how much space I'm using, how much memory limit I have been reaching and things like that. To just explore the power of OpenShift, let's try deploying some workloads. The moment you click on workloads, you can see different resources. If you're familiar with Kubernetes, you know that these are the different resources which Kubernetes provides. For example, pods are logical grouping of your containers. Deployments are logical pods where you can define different replica strategies and different rolling update strategies. If you want to deploy batch jobs, you can create cron jobs or jobs to achieve that. And if you have a web application and if you want to expose those pods or services, then you can definitely use service and routes. So we are going to click on deployment. The moment you click on deployment, there is an option for us to say create deployment. Notice that I'm not logging into any console to deploy the application. You can obviously do that with OpenShift. OpenShift has its own CLI, which is a wrapper around again kubectl and it provides more features than Kubernetes. The moment I click on create deployment, which is available in the console, it will allow me to paste the YAML configuration inside the browser itself. I don't have to log into any of the terminals to deploy an application. Instead, I'll be able to deploy the application from the web itself. This is a sample hello OpenShift example, which OpenShift provides for us by default. However, if you want to modify this, you can definitely remove them and then just modify it just for the sake of it. In this particular example, I'm not going to modify any of it. I'm just going to click on the create option. This is similar to applying a YAML configuration inside a Kubernetes cluster. If you look at the YAML configuration, it says we are going to deploy three replicas of the same deployment. And notice that if I click on the overview option, it shows me the deployment overview of how many pods are running. So there are three pods which are running. I'm going to just reduce it to one. Let's say I can do that directly from the console here. If you're using Kubernetes, you will have to modify your YAML configuration and then do a apply. Here, you don't have to do that. See that accidentally I reduced it further and then there are no pods running. I'll just increase it to one so that we can see an example which is running inside the OpenShift environment. You can also see different configurations on the strategies which are applied as a part of the YAML configuration. Like I said, in the deployment, you will be able to define the different strategies and how your application is going to get deployed. Now, in order to expose a URL for this particular application, if you look at it, this application is running on 8080 port and that's the container port. Now, in order to expose this to an external world, we are going to use services. So service is a resource inside Kubernetes, which will expose our deployments, right? And I'm seeing that there is a port change. So I'm going to say, use my target port also as 8080. So I'm I have changed the port number. Also, the application selector, I need to select as the application which we deployed, right? 
and it was called hello hyphen open shift given inside the deployment so let me open and cross check if the label is correct i'm opening the deployments the moment i click on example i can go to the yaml configuration and i can see the selector what i had provided when i deployed see that my label was hello hyphen open shift which is exactly the same which i added here and i think we are good to create the service let me create the service so this will expose the 8080 port on 8080 itself directly so we have created a service for the deployment which we created and also by default openshift creates a cluster ip i don't want to have a cluster ip instead i want to expose a load balanced url for that what i can do is i can create a route I'll go to the routes option and I'll click on create route. This will create a new route for me. I'll just give the name as is. I don't have any website registered for this example. So I will not use anything unique. Instead, I will use an existing service. And the moment I don't provide this option, OpenShift will create a domain under this particular domain, openshift-online.com. So I can click on the service and also I want to map 8080 right that's the port I want to map my load balancer to so I'll give the name of the route as my route and we should be able to create the route now the moment I create the route if you see here it created a route called my route hyphen tech primers dot apps dot us west 2 starter open shift online let me open this in a new window this now takes me to the hello open shift message which the app is returning if you see the developer experience in deploying a containerized application it's immense if you know the container and if you want to deploy your application you can just click on the create deployment and just change your container name here this is nothing but the docker image path of where my image should be taken from and notice that this is having an open shift as the namespace so basically red hat has a open shift flavor where you can have your containers which can be hosted inside red hat's open shift itself so open shift not only provides just the container orchestration or a platform as a service it also helps you in building and deploying your images inside the open shift platform itself if you're new to open shift do try out open shift by creating a free trial which you can try out for the next two months if you're already using open shift do let me know what are the different kinds of use cases you want me to try inside the OpenShift online. I hope you were able to understand what OpenShift is and how is it different from other cloud providers. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.